Just uh, one note here, Governor Tate Rees made the following statement regarding the federal government's decision to release the plan to mitigate flooding in the Mississippi Delta. Uh, we've been working tirelessly for years to ensure that the federal government finishes the pumps, and today I want to celebrate a serious victory. A delegation from EPA, Interior, and Army said that they will be releasing a plan to mitigate the flooding in the Mississippi Delta, which as of now includes the pump that we have been fighting for. The uh, the press release from the, the governor of the state, Tate Reeves. Hank Burdine is on. Good morning, Hank. How are you, sir? Can you hear me? I've got you. Man, uh, it's a it's a good time to crack open a, a fresh bottle of tequila, is it not? If if the, is what are the, I don't want to get too happy about this until I know that this is it. Is uh, what's your thoughts on this? Is this the last stumbling block, or where are we now? Well, when you've got, and the Biden administration put this together after uh, vetoing the other plan they had. Mm-hmm. You've got the Army Corps of Engineers, the Environmental Protection Agency. You've got FEMA. You've got the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Natural Resources and Conservation Service, U.S. Forestry Service. Every one of them coming together, agreeing on a plan that will include pumps, among other uh, non-structural uh, assets of the plan, to go ahead and get this thing going. We had three meetings yesterday. I was at the very first one because I wanted to hear it firsthand right up front. And it's such a good, uh, I say, group of folks together and have come together with a good plan. Mm -hmm. Now, that plan includes the pumps and the recommended plan come up with by the Corps and the EPA and all of them is for a larger set of pumps that will handle the water more efficiently and effectively. And these pumps are to be kicked on at two different elevations. One during the winter time when you have the winter rains and all like that from November 1 through March 24, those pumps would kick on at an elevation of 93. During the growing season, March 25 through October 21st, it would kick on three feet lower to allow these farmers to get in and prepare and plant these crops that we have. Now, these items are still being tweaked. The meeting we had yesterday was for input, for people to talk about what, you know, the plan and, and what could make it even better. So they are looking to tweak the planning uh, elevation a little bit. And that's a good thing. They got their ears open listening to things like that. Uh, the uh, still by area where the pumps are still going to be placed, the still bio gates themselves will be adjusted as far as when they are open and when they are closed. They're talking about now closing them around the elevation of 70, which is really good for the aquatics and the fisheries in the system, in the lower delta system, holding water in there during the uh, low water times. And we also still have the low water flow wells that are going to be installed to put water in these systems during August and September when the Sunflower River basically dries up. So all that's a good thing. Wow. And uh, we're just so happy and so uh, pleased that they've come together in agreement on a plan that's good for everything. It's good for the people that live down there. It keeps the roads and highways out of the water. Mm -hmm. The majority of the houses are out of the water. Uh, The environment, the animals aren't impacted as so severely as they have been in the past. Your cropland stays out of the water. Uh, it's still allowed to flood during the winter time. So, hey, it's a win-win all the way around the way we're looking at it. Now, you see the, any, the, any any major cha- you When you were talking about those major changes, the only thing you've mentioned is the pumps are going to be slightly larger than earlier anticipated. 
And you said That's that they're, they're still tweaking it. Well, now that I think is a given. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the larger pumps will allow, there are no pumps that can maintain explicitly that huge amount of water. But by cutting them on at certain times as the water's coming down from the headwater, mm -hmm. and by having a larger system of pumps, then that maintains the overall level that we're looking to have uh, to, 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 to assess and mitigate all of these problems we have down there. So that's the need for the larger pumps. And uh, everybody's going along with it. Did, did they put a dollar value on this one? And if they did, is it commensurate with the last one or equal to the last one? I did not hear a dollar value at this time. Uh, the meeting yesterday was the first meeting after they came up with the plan mm -hmm. to present it to the stakeholders and get comment from the stakeholders down in the Delta, in the South Delta. Now, by June 30th, they will come up with the final plan after tweaking it from listening to the folks down there. So by the end of June, we're going to know what we got. Now, uh, I don't have any idea a time frame. We still have to go through the process of design, uh, letting the bids out, uh, funding, of course, during that time, and then going to work. So if it takes a year to get all that stuff done or maybe longer than three years to build, then hopefully within four to five years we got some relief that's been promised over 80 years ago. Yeah. Hey, now, what's what's the entry port for what highway or what roadway will they all that equipment move in? What, where's where's strategically that located? Well, as you're north of Vicksburg, uh, I think it's 454. Don't quote me on that. But yeah. uh, north of Vicksburg, before you get to the Will Whittington Diversion Channel, mm -hmm. there is the Yazoo Backwater Levee. And... Uh, Left from there on the way up to Eagle Lake is where the steel biostructure is. So State Highway, good shape, you know, won't be tan roads yeah. up, bringing equipment in, everything's good. Now, today we have one more meeting in Vicksburg at 9 o'clock, uh, open to the public. Senators uh, Cindy Hyde-Smith and Roger Wicker will be there, and they'll hold a press conference after that meeting. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Thompson, Congressman Thompson, is going to be there. We've not heard a statement from him yet. Mm -hmm. uh, Cindy Hyde-Smith, Senator Smith, and Senator Wicker have both come out uh, with great statements about this. And let me say a little something about those two folks there. They have been proponents of this project from the get-go. Uh, I, I like to quote Cindy Hyde-Smith as being a war horse, and she is. She, she got boots on the ground in this situation when we had that horrible thing that happened, the tornado at uh, Rolling Fork. She was there the next day. As quick as she could get in there safely, she was there. Where so, uh, Where is that press conference, did you say? At the Corps of Engineers in Vicksburg. You know, I would imagine, Hank, that this is the latest technology when they put this in. All of that's going to be controlled by, you know, remotely, or is it? Is it they just program, how they, how they program that? Well, it, it'll be programmed as a lot of these things are with with manuals and uh you know with all the technology we have today yeah. with the way we can judge the amount of rainfall that not only forecasted but actually hits the ground in the north delta knowing how long it takes for that headwater to get down there absolutely to, be able to begin activating these pumps and all so and you i mean hate... you know they'll have people on site on on something like this they don't yeah. own the steel by gates but uh, on a pumping station like this, there'll be people on site all the time. I, I had the specs of the old ones a long time ago. How much? How many gallons a, a minute they pump out? And it was just it, it, these are these are pretty big bilge pumps. I'll tell you that. They're well, remarkable. they are big. What we call Billy Joe pumps. But uh, we're going from fourteen thousand five hundred cubic feet per second mm -hmm. up to a twenty-five thousand cubic foot per second. Pump. How about that? How about that? That's big. But when you look at, when you run the numbers, when those pumps are kicked on, the Mississippi River itself is running at 
100 to 2 million, 200,000 cubic feet per second. Yeah. So you run the numbers there, it's less than 1.5% going into the Mississippi River. That's why, that's why we call it the mighty Mississippi. Hank Burdine, it thank you, man. Be, Appreciate you so very, very much. Let's get it on. <laughs> Sounds like a song to me.